Hi, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Selenia, and today I am joined by Lynn Kay of Beat It Percussion to discuss the third Unsung Heroes workshop, which is taking place this Thursday. So, hello, Lynn, and welcome. Hello, Selenia. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. Thanks. So, let's get right into it. So yep. just for anybody who may have missed the first interview that we did about the first workshop, could you please tell us about Beat It Percussion and how long you've been going for? Yep, I can do that. Um, we became a community interest company in 2013. And I started a couple of years before that just doing little little bits of drumming workshops out in the community, doing them very badly and learning from my mistakes. Um, and what we've been doing over all that time is providing sound and rhythm based activities for people in the community, working mostly with people with memory loss, which can include people living with dementia and people that need mental health support and really trying to support people, especially through COVID with their well-being, and yeah, helping people with self-care and helping them to relax. Oh, that's brilliant. So you really have just massive positive impact on the community really across different areas. And as you said, especially during the last 12 months of COVID when people yeah. really have needed support with their well-being. So that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So, this is going to be the second workshop that you'll be hosting, and it's yep. obviously the third one in the series of workshops. That's right. How did you find delivering the first one, and what are you looking <laughs> forward to in terms of this workshop? I was absolutely terrified. I don't know if anybody could tell. <laughs> Not at all. Um, <laughs> no, because it was a new format for us, mm. and, and it's slightly different to most of the, the things that we've run before in that we're appealing to a different part of the population, which is, we, we call them heroes. So it's those essential workers that have been keeping everything going throughout the pandemic and beyond. And that can be all sorts of people, um, drivers, delivery people, people in hospitality and catering, people that have kept going as volunteers, people in the community looking after other people. It was open to anyone so we didn't really know who was going to come and the, the first time the numbers were a bit on the small side which which is usual with these things but i mean i didn't really know what i was walking into and it's also easier to, to actually go in a room with people when it's something strange when you're doing it online you, you feel actually more exposed or i do anyway um, but in actual fact, it went well. Well, you were there. You might like it to say. It went <laughs> extremely well. I think you delivered it beautifully. And obviously we had quite a few attendees as well. And we all got something so positive out of the experience. So it was, it was really, really good. You did really well. Oh, thank you. That's, <laughs> that's nice feedback. Yeah, I mean, we, we did a bit of messing about with found objects to make sounds with, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Which was... I was really nervous about that bit, but it, it would just made people laugh. Mm. And if you can make people laugh, job done, really. Absolutely. Yeah. About releasing that as well, isn't it? It's nice well, to that, be able... that's all part of what it's about, the support after exactly. COVID and talking about the, the feelings that we've been hanging on to. If you can let some of that go, that's got to be healthy. Mm. And then if you remember, we did a sound bath, which is me playing the sensory instruments that we've got, the gongs and that sort of thing. To, to just give people a, a lovely relaxed experience to finish on. Yeah, it was lovely. It was very relaxing. Singing bowls Thank are you. amazing. <laughs> yes. So my next question. So yes. in terms of the workshop, it's an interactive rhythm workshop. So yeah. for anybody who may not know, what exactly is that? And if you could just give us a little idea as to what the attendees can expect on the day with the workshop. Yeah, yeah, very good question. Um, it's going to be completely different to the other one that we just talked about. Similar in a way that the first part of the evening or the morning, because we're running two sessions on the day to enable people to join whichever they can. Um, it starts with a, a sort of a conversation about COVID issues and how people have been affected by that but trying to look at it in a positive way, looking at ways to support each other moving forward, or as you said just now, dealing with some of those pent up feelings perhaps, and, and just recognizing that, that people have had 
separate but similar experiences and that can be quite healing. The activity as such is going to be interactive so I don't necessarily expect every person to own a drum and have one in their own home even though that's that's sort of fairly normal for us here but you can make drumming sounds on virtually anything. You can actually do it with your hands on your knees if you've got nothing else to use. That works. I'm going to suggest that people perhaps put a book on the table, a nice thick book like the old phone directories. We don't have those anymore, do we? <laughs> or even a cushion. A cushion and a pair of chopsticks works fine. You don't have to be able to make a lot of volume, but I want people to be able to experience tapping something and feeling that in their bodies. Well, that's, a, that's um, brilliant as well, though, isn't it? I mean, the fact that you're so flexible with the approach that, you know, it's household objects, whatever you've got to hand, you know, that, that really makes these workshops really accessible to everybody. Because like you said, not everyone's going to have a drum. No. You know? So it's just showing them that, yeah, you can take part and you can make sound with absolutely yeah. anything. Yeah. We do deliver drums to people if they want to borrow them. That can be arranged as well, oh, cool. but not at this short notice, yeah. probably. But that is always an option. But you know, if if you look at children, this is how they start. They they tap things together. Absolutely. And, and the rest is history, sort of thing. So, mm. yeah, it also means that if you've enjoyed it, you can carry on. You can do it again for yourself. You can show your household or your family members. Hey, we did this. It was a bit silly, but it was actually fun, and and you can share that knowledge. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so for my final question, so mm -hmm. there is one more Hung Sung Heroes workshop to take place after this. Yes. How have you found organising the workshops, and in terms of delivering these workshops online, is it a format that you'll continue to have? as we come out of COVID, obviously, mm -hmm. and hopefully once lockdowns are over. Okay. Um, how have I found organising it? Quite a lot of work. Uh, but what we're having for the next one, which is the 5th of August, we're having a spoken word artist come to do his stuff with us. Brilliant. So it'll be a change from my face. And as we had last month, we, we had a vocalist who you did a lovely interview with as well, so some people might have seen that. Mm. And I think it's it's good for us as a rhythm and sound organisation to expand our boundaries a bit and bring Absolutely. other people in, other, other arts, other facilitators. That's something we'd like to do a lot more of going into the future. Um, we will be having a celebration event on the 21st of August, but we haven't got final permission on the venue yet. So we might need to do another one of these to talk about that, if that's <laughs> going to be all right. Yeah, no, of course, of course. Um, and I would like to carry on doing this type of work yeah. after this this project. Um, the, the evaluation of the project will, will give us some pointers as to what worked and what didn't work. But I think it's... On different levels, as I said, it's very good for us to interact with other other arts, other media, other facilitators, and I do think it's important for people have a to have a place to come where they can talk freely and get some peer support as well. Absolutely. And if you're a freelance or a lone worker, or even working in a lot of organisations, you don't really get that support, mm. and we would like to be part of that that culture of supporting people if we can yeah absolutely and still obviously there's still quite a few people who are quite uncomfortable about going into yes. social spaces and so it would be helping them as well yeah in terms of that isn't it so it's, it's great yeah. to, to think that these are going to be something that you'll be continuing even if it's in a different type of format it might of... even be a sort of mixed format where we yeah. have some face-to-face -face sessions and some online sessions I think that's likely to be the way forward for a lot of providers. Of course, yeah. having to evolve as um, things change, <laughs> living in yeah, different uh, times again. Now, aren't we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh well, thank you ever so much for joining me this afternoon. I've really appreciated it. Had welcome. fun interviewing you again. Thank and you. on that note, just a final reminder: the Unsung Heroes Workshop, the Interactive Rhythm Workshop, being hosted by Lin K is going to be taking place this Thursday, the 1st of July, and there are going to be two sessions, one in the morning at 
10 o'clock, 10.30, was it 10 o'clock to 11.30, isn't it? Uh, yes, that one, 10 to 11.30. 11.30. And then there's an evening session, half six till eight. So be sure right. to get yourself booked on. So thank you. Thanks, Alenia.